In this video, we are going to create the burst effect, which actually turns out to be very easy, but we're going to add a little bit of something to this exercise to make this a little bit more interesting. Here's what I'd like you to do. I would like you to open up the number three burst composition, and currently you can see that we have the rock and blues audio clip with layer markers, and I have a colored solid background right now. We are going to create our burst and it couldn't be easier. We're going to come over here to our motion two panel and we're going to click on the burst button just once. And there you go. It's not animated yet. So nothing's happening if I go along with the timeline here, but let's style this before we start thinking about animating. As you can see, this burst is made up of one shape that has what's called a repeater effect on it that repeats a shape and adds a rotation effect at the same time to give you this sort of burst effect. We're not going to go into the details of the repeater effect. What I want to do, though, is take a look at the burst effect in the effects controls panel over here. Now, my effects controls panel has opened up automatically. If you don't see these properties here in your effects controls panel, make sure that you have your burst layer selected and come to your window window drop down menu and come down here to effect controls burst and then you will see this. Now let's style this correctly before we think about animating this. Now there's a lot of properties here. We don't have to go through each and every one. I do want to just highlight though that there's a couple here that are really quite important for us. The first thing that I want to highlight is that if we come down here to the bottom that we have two properties here, one called fill color and one called stroke color. And you can see that they are both turned on at the moment with these checkboxes. I want the fill color, but I don't want the stroke color. So I'm going to come along here to where it says stroke on off. I'm going to click on this checkbox to turn that off. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up to the top here and you can see that we have a number of properties. One of them is our center point. Right now our burst is coming out from a center point right here. We could offset that but we're not going to do that right now. One thing we can play with though is the number of copies. I can click and drag on that and you can see I can create as many copies as I want. Of course I probably don't want that many. I may want to reduce it down to I don't know 12. That sounds like a reasonable number. Now currently our burst elements are equally spaced, but we could change that. For example, I could take this number and drag it to the right so that I could have it bursting out in one direction. There could be some real interesting uses for that, but I'm going to leave mine at 360, command said. I could change the burst offset, which allows me to change the distance from the center point for each of those elements. Again, I'm going to press command Z to undo that. Uh, now here, distance from center is a property that we are going to animate. The first thing I want to do is position my current time indicator right over top of this layer marker right here. I'm also going to change the order of my layers here. You can see my rock and blues layer has moved underneath my burst. I prefer to have this above so that I can see my layer indicators at the top. Again, I'm going to come along here and select my burst layer. I'm going to make sure that my current time indicator is again over top of this layer marker as the first guitar chord comes on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my distance from center and I'm going to click and drag to the left because I can see that my burst shapes are not all inside of my composition window, which I want to have. There I go. So this will be the furthest extent of my burst as it comes out from a center point. Now that I have that positioned where I want, I'm going to come along here to distance from center and click on the stopwatch. I also want to see that keyframe with this layer. So I'm going to come down to my layers panel, click on the burst layer and press U so I can see that keyframe. So there's my distance from center. I'm going to take my current time indicator and I'm going to position it at the beginning of my timeline. And I'm going to take this value distance from center and I'm going to click there and I'm going to make that zero. Press enter and you can see I now have an animated burst coming out from a center point. Okay, but there's one more property that I want to animate to make this a little bit more interesting. Again, I'm going to move my current time indicator back over top of this layer marker so I can see my burst at that point. I'm not going to change anything with linking width and height. Now here's something I could do. I could change the burst width, but if I wanted to make that a little bit fatter or if I wanted to round it out to the point where that was a complete circle, that could be an interesting way of doing that as well. Again, I'm going to press Command Z because I'm just going to leave it as these longish bursts. Now here is another property that we are going to animate, the burst height. If I click on that value, you can see that I can change the actual length of each one of those bursts. Again, I want to be careful because I can lengthen this to a point where they start to go off the edge of my composition. If I do want to have them that long, I just have to make sure that I bring my 
distance from center slider back like that. Perhaps I will do that. I'll leave them long like that. Now that I have my burst height, the length that I want, I'm going to click on it and create a keyframe for that property right here by clicking on the stopwatch. Okay. Again, I want to see that here, so I'm going to click on this layer and press U to reveal my keyframes. Again, I'm going to bring my current time indicator back to the beginning of my timeline, and I'm going to change my burst height from 120 to 0. If I scrub that, you can see I now have a burst that comes out from a center point like that. Now at this point, I want the burst to disappear quickly. I'm going to make it disappear by animating its burst height. But I want to think about the music as well. The guitar chord comes in with a real strong emphasis, and I want this burst to reflect that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my keyframe for my burst height that I've just put down, and I'm going to move that back along my timeline, just a couple of frames like that. And with my current time indicator still positioned over this layer marker, I'm going to take my burst height and I'm going to set that to zero. Press return. So now I have my burst height going from zero up to 120 and then quickly back down to zero. And you can see I get this effect. If you feel that's happening too quickly, we can space these keyframes out a little bit. Maybe I'll do that. I like that effect. I think that works well. I'm going to add some easing, though, to these keyframes. I'm going to come over here and select all these keyframes by dragging over top of them. And I'm going to add some easing over here in the Motion 2 panel. I'm going to reset my panel. So I'm going to drag these again almost all the way to the left. And I'm going to add this middle slider, the Ease In, Ease Out slider, by dragging that to the middle part here. Just to see what that looks like, I'm going to press my spacebar. That looks pretty good to me. I kind of like the way that comes in and then goes out on the beat. If you're happy with that burst, then we are essentially done. But let's do something with this so it's a little bit more interesting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select my burst shape, and I'm going to twirl that down so I don't have to look at all the keyframes. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Command-D, or coming down here and edit Duplicate. So I now have two versions of that burst effect. This new one, Burst 2, I'm going to click on the layer indicator and I'm going to drag it a couple of frames along my timeline so that there's a bit of a gap between it, its beginning and the layer below it beginning. I'm going to come over to my Effects Controls panel and I'm going to change the color. I'm going to click here where it says Fill Color and click on the Magenta Color Swatch and I'm going to change this to a bright cyan. I'm going to say OK. If I click on my current time indicator, you can see that I now have two bursts, but because they're staggered in time, one is seen and then the next is seen. Let's do this one more time. I'm going to come over here to my Burst 2 layer, and again I'm going to press Command D or Edit Duplicate, and again I'm going to click on the layer indicator and drag it a couple of frames to the right. And I'm going to come over to the Effects Control panel, and I'm going to click on Fill Color, and again I'm going to click on this Cyan, and I'm going to make this yellow. I'm going to say OK. So I now have three colors coming out of my burst. I could keep on going and duplicating layers and repeating those as I go down my timeline, but let's do something that is going to allow us to do some slightly more advanced animation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of these burst layers, and I'm going to turn those into one pre-composition, basically grouping them together by coming to the Layer drop-down menu and selecting Pre-Compose, or Command-Shift-C on my keyboard. Let's call it Burst. OK. In our Layers panel here, those three layers have now been turned into this one pre-comp. But we're going to make some changes to this pre-comp here. So I'm going to double-click where it says Burst to open it up in its own panel. Now that I'm in this Burst panel, I'm going to make a change. Currently, I only have the one Burst. Rather than repeating keyframes as I move down the timeline, it would be easier for me to create a loop effect, which I'll do. So again, remember how the loop effect works. We want to trim our timeline to the point at which that animation ends. I'm going to put it right at the one second point. So I'm going to click on my work area handle, and I'm going to drag that all the way down so I'm right over the one second point of my timeline. I'm now going to come to my Composition drop-down menu and select Trim Comp to Work Area. And I now have just this one one-second 
composition. I'm going to come back to my number three burst composition. And you can see that, sure enough, the composition that we had here is now shortened. But remember how we add loops. I'm going to hold down my control button and click on that layer so that I see this option, time. And I'm going to choose from this menu, enable time remapping. Again, I have two keyframes that represent the first and last frames of that composition. I'm going to add a loop effect to this time remap property by holding down my option button and clicking on the stopwatch to open up my expressions field. Again, I don't need to do any typing here. I'm just going to use the expression button to open up my property menu. And from here, I'm going to choose loop out duration. I'm going to click once in my composition field. And now if I press my space bar, I have a one second looping animation. Of course, we could have just duplicated our burst effect and followed the beat of the music to create something that's a bit more rhythmical. But I wanted to do it this way because I want to show you this last effect in this exercise that could be very interesting for you. And that's how to work with particles and particle effects. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to select my burst layer and I'm going to come to the layer drop down menu and I'm going to select new, new solid. And now I don't really care what the size or color of this solid is right now. What I'm going to be doing is adding what's called the simulation effect. So a solid layer is often a really good choice when all you're doing is adding an effect to a layer. I'm going to select these solid settings. I'm going to come to the effect drop down menu and I'm going to select simulation. And from simulation, I'm going to select CC particle world. Now you can see that the solid that we had chosen has disappeared. In its place is this weird grid. And if I click on the current time indicator and drag across my timeline, you can see that, oh my goodness, what's going on here? I'm going to turn off the visibility of my burst because that's not really helping. And as you can see here, I have an automatically animating particle effect. Now this looks nothing like what I want it to look like. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of my layer here from medium blue solid press return on my keyboard and I'm going to call this particles. Now I'm going to come over to my effects controls panel and I'm going to click once on this particle drop down menu. And you can see we have something here called particle particle type. What I want you to do is I want you to come here to that drop down menu and we are going to select textured quad polygon. Now the word texture here refers to a separate graphic. We can choose a separate graphic for our particle. So where it says texture here, I'm going to turn that down. And here I'm going to choose my texture layer. Currently it's set to none, but I'm going to click on that and I'm going to choose burst. If I zoom in, you can see that our particle effect is using our burst graphic. Again, I'm going to position my current time indicator right over top of that layer marker. Now you'll see here that there's a lot of properties that we can play with. Here's some of the properties under the particle category alone. But look at physics has its own properties that are really interesting to play with. There's a lot going on here, so I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. I'm going to put my current time indicator over top of this layer marker, and I'm going to come down here to the particle category, and I'm going to make a couple small changes. First of all, I'm going to change the way that these particles are rotating. Right now, they're rotating in 3D space, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to where it says rotation axis, and I'm going to change that to Z axis. And what that's going to do, it's going to make all of our particles look forward to the viewer. I'm also going to take my birth size and I'm going to drag that to the right and make that one. Press return. Death size, I'm going to just make that zero. Birth size, of course, is just the beginning of that particle's animation and death size is what size it is at the end. For size variation, 50% seems fine. You can see we get a variety of shapes. Maximum opacity currently set to 75. I want that to be 100. I'm going to take that and drag that all the way to 100. I now have all those graphics at 100%. Zoom out so I can see this a little bit better. And there is my particle effect as it's bursting out right now. Now there's just one more thing that I want to change here in the particle section before we move on is I'm going to take my texture time from current to birth. What that's going to do, it's going to allow each iteration of this starburst to play out its own timeline so that everything's not ending at exactly the same moment. That's all I need to change here for my particle. Again, I'm going to take my current time indicator and position over that layer marker, and I'm going to turn up my particle effect, and I'm going to open up physics. The only thing I'm going to change here is the gravity value. Currently, you can see it's set to 0.5. I'm going to click on that and change that to zero. 
press return. Now there's no gravity affecting these bursts. As they come out from a center point, they will keep on going out in all directions. Okay, well that's almost starting to look like what I want, but I think there's too many of these bursts coming in here right now. So again, I'm going to take my current time indicator, position it over top of this layer marker, and I'm going to come over here to my birth rate, and I'm going to change that from two to one. So I have that many bursts coming out from a center point. Now if I take a look at this, you can see that this keeps on looping out, but I can control this by animating the birth rate. I'm going to position my current time indicator right here at the first layer marker, and I'm going to click on the stopwatch next to birth rate. Now I'm going to take my current time indicator and I'm just going to position it one frame to the right of that keyframe. And I'm going to take my birth rate value from one down to zero. Now you can see I get just the one burst. If I turn the original burst on, now you can see I have that effect. Of course, there's a lot more that we could do with this, but I just wanted to show you how you can turn a graphic into a particle. This can be used for all sorts of very interesting effects. And that is our exercise.